Hey everyone, it's Justin Thompson again, physical therapist. It's good to see you guys. Um, uh, here with another uh, case study on an injury from a runner that I just treated. So this runner had what's called compartment syndrome. So what I wanna do first is just go over a little bit about what compartment syndrome is. And then we'll talk about how I actually treated it and how if you end up getting this problem, how this can be treated for you as well. Um, so compartment syndrome is essentially a swelling that happens inside of a compartment of the lower leg. Specifically in this, uh, this runner's case, it was in the anterior compartment of the lower leg. So right around the shin area, so right in here. Now a lot of people can confuse this as shin splints and that's what was, that's what the original thought was. Was it shin splints? Was it a tendonitis or something like that? But when the person started developing what's called a drop foot, there was a little bit more concern there. So it's the compartment syndrome is where there's a there's fascia that encapsulates a group of muscles. And if there is too much swelling that happens inside of that fascial encapsulation there, it will start pushing against the fascia. And when it does that, if there's not enough space for the fascia to expand, if there's not enough flexibility in that tissue, then you'll start to get this compression of the muscles inside of that fascia, uh, that, that inside of that fascia, compression of the, uh, the blood vessels and compression of the nerves. So what happened in this runner's case was, uh, that she was starting to get pain. It felt like um, felt like shin splints on the front side of the lower leg, but it ended up starting to give her this drop foot, which indicated that there was some compression of the nerves that was actually occurring. So what we did then was, that, that told me right away that this was not a shin splint issue. There may have been some, some shin splint stuff involved as well but the main issue here was compartment syndrome and that you know that's that's just where you know you've got that swelling in that compartment and it starts to compress on the structures inside of that compartment okay so basically i had to figure out what was the cause of this so in the evaluation You have to figure out what's the cause. You can't just say, oh, you've got compartment syndrome. Here's, the, here's how you treat it. We had to figure out why did this even occur so that it doesn't come back again later on. You don't make the same mistakes that create the same problem in the future. So with this particular runner, she, she's been running for multiple years and she, started to hit a point during the summer where she was doing a few different things at one time that were all changes to her training program. Number one, she was increasing her mileage. Oftentimes that's enough to give you an injury, but I don't think that was it because she was doing it fairly responsibly. She was increasing speed so around the time that she started having this, she set a 5K PR. And so she was definitely increasing speed. She also changed footwear. So during the summer, she went from a shoe that was a little bit more built up in the heel uh, to a little bit more of a neutral um, zero, almost a zero heel to toe drop, not quite zero, is about four millimeters. Um, but she changed her footwear as well, while at the same time also changing her running form. Okay, so we got a few things going on here where these are the things that she was changing all at one time. Now notice all of these things are good things to change. You know, it's good to increase your mileage if you're wanting to perform better. It's good to increase your speed if you're wanting to perform better. 
in the and I'm of the opinion that as as much as you can to try and go towards a zero drop shoe, and that's what she was trying to do here with the footwear. Um, and then changing running form, and that that change was was for the better. So the the running form changes that she's trying to make were definitely for the better. The problem is, too much of a good thing can lead to too much of a good thing, and and we know that it can be a problem if you are doing changing too many variables with your running all at one time. Now, with this runner, she also had really poor ankle mobility. Especially on the side, uh, on the leg that was affected. So we definitely uh, had to you know, make sure that that was something that was going to be able to be restored. So all of these different factors kind of went into most likely leading to this compartment syndrome. So because of all this, you know, all this stuff we can change in, in her training. So that's what we did. And then this was going to be, you know, in the office trying to figure out how do we improve that ankle mobility. So then what did we do for treatment? Okay, so for treatment, you know, when she's doing all this stuff, we had to bring some of these variables back into, back closer to where she was before she was changing them. So we had to reduce the mileage. We had to. It's, it's something that if you have an overuse injury, there's no getting around it. You're going to have to do that. Okay, so with her, with her training, we started to reduce mileage almost down to nothing, and we started a um, return to running program. Return to running, forgive the uh, handwriting, guys. Um, return to running, which started with being able to walk, move to a walk jog, and into just jogging, and then start to increase mileage again, okay? So that's how we progress in a return to, return to running program. Now, we also took her speed down. She's not, she hasn't been, she hasn't done any speed work or anything yet. What I, what I had her do in terms of the footwear thing was instead of just going straight from her built up shoe down to that more and more flat shoe was instead of just 100% changing over, I had her go you know, about a quarter of the time. So 25% in the, uh, in the flatter shoe and then go back to her other one, do that for about two weeks and then move it up to maybe 50% do that for a couple of weeks, move up to, and, and the way that she was, she progressed it before was just too quickly. So these changes that you're making have to be made over time. And then we also looked at running form um, here. I didn't change a whole lot with her running form. The changes that she was making were a good thing. I think it was just the combination of everything uh, thrown together was causing the problem. Now, what did we do for the ankle mobility? So for the ankle, she started at 10 degrees of dorsiflexion. Okay, so if you pull your toes up towards your, your shin, uh, trying to basically lift your, your ankle up, your toes up towards your shin this way, that's called dorsiflexion, and you need roughly 15 to 20, maybe maybe a little bit more degrees of dorsiflexion in your ankle in order to run with good mechanics. Now, she came in with 10 degrees of dorsiflexion, so that's obviously less than what we, uh, what we did for what she needed. With time, we were able to do joint mobilization to improve her dorsiflexion to, whoops, 
20, handwriting's awful, 20 degrees, which allowed for better mechanics in a running, okay? But they kind of freed up that joint a little bit to allow for it to move a little bit better. Now, what we also did was in the anterior compartment itself, in that area of the shin or the lower leg that was swelling where the, where the fascia was not allowing for enough expansion, we did a ton, and I mean a lot, of soft tissue work. So we really, I really dug in there and I wanted to create an actual physical change to the fascia. So I would spend probably 30 minutes just on one area of the leg, just that one anterior compartment of the leg, and that was it. And really trying to get it to change and improve the flexibility, the mobility, the ability of it to adapt to the changes that she was trying to make. So we did a lot, a lot, a lot of soft tissue work on that anterior compartment. So what's the result? Now she is back to running, I believe she's somewhere around two and a half miles uh, continuous with zero pain whatsoever. Um, she's working her way back. She's trying to get back in shape for Boston. Uh, she qualified for Boston this last year and she's gonna be getting back in shape for that um, coming up in, I believe Boston's in April. So, um, so yeah, took about four weeks, four or five weeks for her to get to that point. Um, she was pretty diligent in trying to rest it early on. She didn't try and force anything, so she didn't make it that much worse. The thing that freaked her out though was definitely the drop foot. That's definitely an indication that something has to be done and she didn't try and force anything or push too hard um, once that started to happen. Um, so, um, so yeah, that is compartment syndrome and this is kind of how you treat it. This is, you know, one of the causes. This is obviously um, one case and there are plenty of other potential causes or things that could lead to something like this happening. So if you have any questions or concerns about compartment syndrome or any other running injury, then don't hesitate to reach out to me, and I would love to help you guys out. All right, y'all have a good day.